Greetings. We are happy to announce uh, a new feature that's been added to the Advanced Component Builder for Joomla. This feature is a feature I suppose can can become very useful in the future of JCB. It allows you to export a component out of JCB and not only the components information but everything attached to it. So if the component has uh, admin views linked to it and those admin views have fields linked to it and those fields have field types linked to it and those uh, component has site views and custom admin views and those site views and custom admin views has templates and layouts and dynamic gets and all these various linked concepts to a component is exported. Now the way that you will export a component is you would simply click on this export component and obviously you need to select the component or components that you would like to export. Now there's a few things to say when when we want to export a component. There are two ways in which we export a component. One is in an encrypted way and the other is non-encrypted. Let me show you that in the code. So I'd like you to understand exactly how it works. So we have a method here called Smart Export Builder. Now the Smart Export Builder gets fired at the very end of the compilation or rather the build where all the data has now been extracted from the database and is now one big array uh, of objects. Now basically in this function called get smart export is where this data extrusion takes place. Now during this process we actually take a well, we take account of a specific value and that value's name is export key. So in this for each we are looping through the, uh, the components that you've selected. So if you've selected more than one then it will check whether there is an export key for that component. Now let me show you where that is uh, set in the user interface. When you open a component it has a tab called settings and at the bottom of the right hand column it has a new uh, field called export key. Now you can put any value in here. If you leave this value empty and you export only this component then the component will not be encrypted. If you add a value to this field and you export this component it will encrypt that, in compo that component's data, the database values. It will not encrypt attached files or folders or images that are part of this component. It will only encrypt the data from the database. Now having said that if you select multiple components and any one of them has a key then it will encrypt all the components okay and I'll explain again in the code how this is done so we go back to the code now in the code basically we're asking does this component have an export key if it's true and it is a string we actually this this key is encrypted in a database so we first check that it is able to be decrypted and then we decrypt the key and then we add it to the key array with the components ID. So basically we are building up an array of each component's key. Now if a component does not have a key it simply ignores this little script and it continues building its data set. Then once all the data set of all components are finished 
we basically get to this smart export builder I said spoke of you know when we started looking at the code now in this smart export builder we are simply asking have we found any keys if we have found any keys we are gonna explode sorry implode the array and convert it to a MD5 string very simple we will then use this MD5 string with an EA, uh, AES encryption cipher to lock the data so there's the data now above here we already changed the whole data set to a serialized string so we have a string in this variable and here we are basically encrypting the whole string uh, and now in this variable we have the encrypted value if we don't have any keys even if that means if none of the components that were selected had any keys set then it will default to simply do a base64 encode and that as well then gets written to um, to the file that's part of the package so that is how it exports the data I'm not going to explain too much about the actual mechanics that's happening here in the bottom of the file you're welcome to obviously look through it and if you see any room for improvements you're welcome to make a pull request um, this uh, this is obviously the first try okay so it exports the data and then checks whether we have any keys so if you have for example exporting five uh, components and all five components have keys then all five keys will basically create a very long string and then that whole string will be changed into an MD5 string which is 32 characters and that 32 characters is then used to encrypt the data now not to worry this actual key which we then end up using to do the encryption will be shown to you in the interface after the you know after the the data has been exported okay so let's go back to to the to the user interface and let's export a component okay so I have this component uh, and it has a key and I have other components that has no keys at this stage so I'll select this one as a demonstration and then I'll click export component and as you can see it generated a key for me which I can then use to import this package into another JCB I can import it into the same JCB but it's obviously not necessary so I could use it as a backup now it is storing the compiled package in the temporary folder at this stage I am working to uh, determine whether we should actually make this position you know the, the placement of the file dynamic so that you could change it um, because I think it would be ideal if it automatically becomes a kind of backup method so we even thinking of setting up a timer that could run backups of your components using this method anyway that's future planning that's not going to be happening soon though um, okay so you will have an exported component at the moment if you if your data sets are not too big and your memory uh, settings on your PHP and so forth is allowing this kind of compilation you could select all components and uh, export them the same will be the result since I have only one component set with a key they all will be basically encrypted with the same key and they all be stored in this package so I've just now while talking to you exported all my components into this one package now to demonstrate the importing of this data set I have a blank website ready so let's go there so here's my blank website basically it has no special 
JCB components. So first thing I'll do is I'm going to install uh, JCB. I'm going to install it from, from GitHub. So I'm going to GitHub and then I will open the releases and I'll just copy the link to this latest release and go back here paste that in here and basically install it okay the installation was successful now I'm gonna go to the component builder then I'll open the components and as you can see um, I have only the demo component here and I would like to basically move all these components that I have over to this new install okay so I'm gonna click on import components then I'm gonna browse to that uh, that package that we've just exported and then I'm gonna upload it now we have two features here this force local update basically what it will do is on normal circumstances if you do a import the the import function looks at the data that are currently in this in this current JCB install so for example we're talking about field types we're talking about fields we're talking about admin views and site views if it finds a site view that is being installed that it is already in the current database it looks at the last modified date and then by that determines whether the current installed version is newer if it's newer it will by default ignore the new data and not install it now sometimes you might get a package where you would like to force that it updates the current data even though it may be older data so this is why we have the switch you can then click yes to force the update now we have a key for this package so we'll leave this to yes I'll basically just come over here and copy that key this key will then always be necessary if you're importing this package and that will be it and we'll click continue it might take a time since this is quite a huge data set um, so you could just patiently wait and at last it is installed it tells us that the install has been successful you might get these warnings now what these warnings is really telling you is that during the install obviously you realize that lots of IDs will change I mean we are working with a database that creates IDs as the new item is added and since these are the IDs used to link into the various components and views and places all these IDs must be remapped now we have been able to actually find a very well formulated algorithm to to resolve this problem so it remaps all the IDs but sometimes there are certain IDs that hasn't uh, you know it's not possible to remap and so we are basically telling you here about them and uh, so you could see that the target field in the admin views has a mismatch in the field with ID 244 now you can go back to the old install and try and find out what happened there and most of the time when I have reviewed this usually it is because that specific field is no longer published or is no longer available for some reason um, so this is just giving you a heads up of any changes that may have occurred and then you can actually go to these various places and manually fix them most of the time these warnings will not show and everything will just say all is okay but if there is warnings and errors you just simply read the, the messages uh, slowly and close closely and I'm sure you'll be able to resolve it uh, quite easily well that is a demonstration of the new feature now just to show you that it actually does work 
I um, didn't mention before, but it actually moves all the custom f uh, files as well as custom folders, as well as all the images per admin view, site view, and wherever to the new install. So it moves it into its right place. So if that is true, we should be able to go to the compiler, select any of the components, and it should load that component's image here. I should be able to just click um, OK Compile and it should be able to simply compile that component. After compilation I could simply click installing the component and obviously if this component was correctly mapped previously and I were to go to that component now um, I would see that everything about the component is right and it works well and that is really uh, this new feature in action. I really hope that it will be as useful to you as it's going to be to me and uh, that you'll have fun with it. I must tell you, I suppose that at some point we could even start looking at selling mapped components. Um, I have a number of components that uh, was made for specific purposes but could be easily adapted for others and so I'm starting to look at the idea of selling mapped components. Obviously uh, it's a little difficult because it's basically selling the rights to it in a way that you could resell it. So I'm not sure what would be the price tag of that. Anyway, we'll see. Thank you for watching.